Hey, digital investors, welcome back to another video where we cover everything, and I mean everything, that is going on inside of the crypto space. There are so many things that are going on. There is so much news that is coming out. It's almost hard to pick and choose what to start including in these videos. If you guys are frequent viewers of the show, make sure you tap the like button. It really does help a ton for the YouTube algorithm. And if you are trying to stay up to date on everything going on inside of the crypto space, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. I want to start off here with Peter Schiff's son has gone all in on Bitcoin from gold since August of 2020. Now, obviously, this is just pretty funny because Peter Schiff is very, <laughs> very publicly known to be, you know, not Bitcoin's biggest fan, right? He does not believe in Bitcoin at all, or at least that's what he, you know, lets the public perceive. That's what he says online and in public whether or not he actually holds some bitcoin you know i'm sure he does maybe not bitcoin maybe some other cryptocurrencies i'm sure he probably has something that he's just not disclosing but peter schiff's son on the other hand is actually a bitcoin bull and uh, we have some tweets from him that indicate that he's gone all in on bitcoin uh, from gold since august of 2020 as this article is stating so let's just check this out this is a spencer schiff who is the son of peter schiff he tweeted that over the past year, a great change has happened in his life. He has gone all in on Bitcoin from gold. Back in August of 2020, he held most of his savings in the most popular precious metal, being gold, and now he has dumped it all to go in on Bitcoin. He does not plan to stop adding more Bitcoin to his holding, it seems. And this is the tweet. He says, what a, and this is on August 27th, by the way, so just a few days ago. He says, what a difference a year makes. Last August, most of my savings were in gold. I'm now all in on bitcoin and i am never going back so pretty crazy stuff again this is peter schiff's son so pretty interesting contrast and uh here this article this article goes on to just some of the stuff that peter schiff has said but i just thought it was funny the very next thing is they talk about peter schiff tweeted that he considers those who are not selling bitcoin now to be quote real idiots <laughs> so i would love to get peter's true thoughts on what he thinks about his son dumping gold for bitcoin that would be pretty funny to, to see what he says if you guys have anything like that or you've seen him talk about that uh send, send me a link or, or post about it in the comments down below also guys meant to throw this in at the beginning but i it totally slipped my mind for those of you who are in the patreon a new video is up where we go over new net and what they are doing with singularity net and singularity down which is honestly some pretty exciting stuff i've been doing a lot of research on new net lately and i'm putting all that research into the patreon so make sure you guys go and check out that post and if you haven't yet checked out the patreon if you haven't joined you don't even know that i have one it's the first link in the description go and check it out it might not be for you but it might be something that you can really benefit from i've been getting a lot of good feedback recently and we also have a lot of recent posts that have gone up you can check all this out on the page but also includes a bunch of other stuff like my top crypto picks and things like that and i will also be probably doing some guides here in the future that i will just put in the patreon for free so if you guys want to check it out first link in the description and with that said let's hop on to the next piece that we have <laughs> dogecoin millionaire is going to start buying up as much cardano is humanly possible this is the guy who like invested his life savings into dogecoin i remember there was like a there was a big thing going on about it he's pretty popular i didn't really like watch any of the interviews or anything you know it's just some kid who took a big chunk of money and threw it on dogecoin it's it's not anything particularly special but to the masses it is right so this guy is a uh, globber that i know i'm going to butcher this so i'm sorry to the guy Gl globber Con contasoto I hope I'm saying that right. The man who invested all of his savings around $250,000. That's just quite a bit of savings in Dogecoin on February the 5th. He said that he is going to start investing in Cardano's ADA. The 33-year-old man, when Doge was trading at around four and a half cents, invested around his $250,000 or all of his life savings. And these were the reasons that he said he invested into Doge. He goes one I love the Dogecoin community on Reddit. Two, he liked the Shiba Inu meme. And three, Elon Musk's Dogecoin advocacy. So as you guys can see, not the greatest reasons to be investing into a coin, right? Um, but such is the nature of Dogecoin investors. And this article goes on uh, right down here. It says, Contesoto told CNBC that since, quote, he didn't have disposable income to buy Dogecoin, he not only used all his savings, but he also sold all the stock he owned, including 
including shares of Tesla and Uber, and invested on margin by borrowing money from Robinhood via the app, right? So super risky, right? Something that nobody should really be doing unless you're, you know, have a lot of experience. Here we have a guy who, you know, likes Elon Musk, likes the Dogecoin community, uh, like the Reddit or whatever, and he buys on margin. I mean, that is that is absolutely insane, guys. I hope nobody out there is doing things like that. He says, my plan is once I hit $10 million, I will take out 10%. In his opinion, he says, quote, this stuff is going to continue to grow. <laughs> he says that although he still has no plans for selling any of his Doge holdings, he wants to use as much of um, as much of his disposable income as possible to buy ADA. And he says, I'm going to start buying up as much Cardano as humanly possible with every bit of money I start making from now on. He also puts out this tweet. I believe in the next five years, the top five cryptos will be Doge, ETH, Bitcoin, Cardano. And interestingly enough, he actually posts XRP. So interesting stuff, guys. Wanted to just present this to you. We do have the Dogecoin millionaire going all in on Cardano. I wanted to post this because not only does it give us a great example of how not to invest into cryptocurrencies. I mean, yes, this guy did end up becoming a millionaire, but you know, for the most part, he did a lot of things wrong. Uh, so not only do we understand what not to do, uh, but I also wanted to bring this up because this is pretty great, right? This guy built a pretty big following. He's known as the Dogecoin millionaire, and now he's bringing Cardano into that fan base that he's built up, right? I think that a bunch of people who all invested in Doge, Doge is all they really know. They think Doge is the future. I think it is absolutely great that they are now getting some exposure to Cardano and hopefully they can educate themselves on you know what good crypto projects are rather than just aping into Dogecoin. So interesting stuff. I think this could be really good for Cardano. If the Doge community starts buying up Cardano at the rate they buy Dogecoin, <laughs> we will probably see a $10 Cardano very, very easily. So cool stuff. If you guys are enjoying the video, Video, make sure you do tap the like button it does help me out a ton for the YouTube algorithm to push this video out to more people here we have squares Jack Dorsey plans to build a decentralized Bitcoin exchange so we know Jack has been doing a lot of things with Bitcoin and around Bitcoin especially with his his company square so let's see what he's talking about now Jack Dorsey tweeted that squares new division focused on creating an open developer platform is planning to build a decentralized Bitcoin exchange he tweeted out, help us build an open platform to create a decentralized exchange for Bitcoin. Now, Mike Brock, who is the lead initiative of this project, tweeted separately, and he says, this is the problem we're going to solve. Make it easy to fund a non-custodial wallet anywhere in the world through a platform to build on and off ramps into Bitcoin. You can think about this as a decentralized exchange for fiat. He says, we'd love for this to be Bitcoin native top to bottom. He also noted that the platform would be entirely developed in public, open source, open protocol, and that any wallet would be able to use it. He also notes gaps around cost and scalability and that TBD needed a solve for exchange infrastructure between digital assets like stable coins. So Jack Dorsey, Mike Brock working hard on this Bitcoin DEX. And again, really adding some fuel to the fire for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies at large. Here we have Ripple demands disclosure concerning SEC employees XRP holdings. Now, this is also quite interesting, right? We got a lot of interesting news across a bunch of different sectors today. And at the end of this article, they also say something that is pretty interesting. Basically, if the SEC decides to ignore um, this order, that the whole case could just be thrown out the window. So let's see what's going on. Ripple recently filed a motion to compel the SEC to reveal policies and information regarding its employees trading in cryptos like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. This motion will add to Ripple's fair notice defense. And as per the filing, this is what Ripple wants the SEC to provide. This is what it says. Anonymized documents reflecting trading preclearance decisions with regard to XRP, Bitcoin, and Ethereum, or alternatively, for that information to be produced in aggregate form. Further, the documents relating to the SEC employees' XRP holdings were also mentioned in the motion filing. Defendants also seek certifications concerning SEC employees' XRP holdings, again, either with redactions of personal information or in aggregate form. We met and conferred with the SEC on this issue on July 8th, 15th, August 18th, and 25th without any progress. Ripple's previous requests were met with the SEC's refusal to produce certain information. Isn't that great, guys? The SEC can just 
yeah they just refuse ripple pointed out that until january 19th of 2018 the sec did not view digital assets as securities and its employees were therefore quote free to buy sell and hold xrp without any restrictions by the sec the document also stated this this evidence provides strong corroboration of the defendant's defenses in this case and undermines the sec's claims specifically the now acknowledged fact that the sec itself did not restrict its own employees from selling or buying xrp notwithstanding its long-standing regulation against its employees engaging in securities transactions without pre-clearance indicates that the sec had not concluded prior to at least January of 2018, that sales and offers of XRP were securities transactions. So interesting stuff, right? They want to see what the SEC, or rather employees of the SEC, were doing with their XRP, Bitcoin, and Ethereum, if any at all. Now, at the bottom here, this is what I was talking about earlier, the court has given the SEC until the 3rd of September to respond to this motion, which, guys, that is not that far away. However, what if the SEC refuses to cooperate once again? And this is what they say. The SEC can absolutely decide to not follow the court's order. What happens after a period of time is the judge will issue sanctions against them. If the SEC continues to ignore the order, then it can ultimately lead to the case being dismissed. So honestly, that's kind of looking like a best case scenario, right? Hopefully the SEC realizes, you know, the blatant beating that they just got right completely hum humiliated and hopefully they just won't even respond and get the whole thing thrown out anyways guys that is some pretty crazy stuff and we will see what comes out of it definitely wanted to let you guys know what's going on there now let's take a look at these three altcoins that are surging this article outlines them and also gives some descriptions of whether or not they can realistically compete with ethereum the three coins we'll be looking at today is Avalanche or AVAX, Solana, Sol, and Terra Luna. They have all exploded over the past month, gaining 292%, 212%, and 191% in value. That is an order of AVAX, Sol, and Luna. The spike in interest on AVAX and Sol, this is what they discussed first, and they said alternative smart contract platforms like Avalanche and Solana have found massive 30-day token price growth as hints of activity and bets on a multi-chain future start to garner attention. Avalanche had attracted limited liquidity across its DeFi projects until earlier this month when it announced a 180 million DeFi incentive program. The Avalanche Foundation allocated the first $27 million for users of lending and borrowing protocol Aave and decentralized exchange Curve or CRV. It highlights the exponential rise of liquidity in AVAX DeFi projects since the incentives were announced. So yeah, I mean, if you're going to give away that much money in incentives, I'm sure you're going to get a boost. They say projects on Avalanche remain marked by being clones of existing projects on Ethereum, attracting this growth through incentives and inflated yields that may or may not persist long term. Now they move on to Solana. They say Solana has focused on DeFi protocol implementations, which have driven growth in its ecosystem. Solana ha also has a processing capacity of between 50,000 to 65,000 transactions per second, which allows the network to scale. That is quite a bit of TPS. They say that there are five projects in the Solana DeFi space, which have more than $100 million worth of total value locked up. For comparison, Ethereum boasts over 60 projects with more than 100 million total value locked. Solana certainly presents an attractive alternative option for projects requiring scaling, though for now, it has barely scratched the surface in competing with Ethereum for total liquidity. Now they move on to Terra. Terra has demonstrated non-trivial signs of adoption in a few choice protocols. Anchor Protocol, which is Terra's largest DeFi protocol, has more than 3.4 billion in TVL. Like Solana and Avalanche, Terra has yet to host more than five projects with more than $100 million in liquidity. According to the analytics firm, they say while some alternative layer one smart contract platforms have seen their native tokens rally in recent weeks, actual liquidity on chain remains limited limited relative to the ethereum chain then glassnode also goes on to say this they say that they see a world in which more users are migrating to these platforms especially if ethereum struggles to scale its network and this is interesting because there are so many people who have been so fed up with ethereum for a very very long time so 
Let's see what they say. They say as some users traverse across to newer and more experimental blockchains, developers will have to access the viability and longevity of additional users and capital moving on or off of Ether. As competition for users, attention, and capital increases, many developers and protocols may find the trade-offs worth it or even find untapped value and opportunity in protocol design. And if Ethereum L2s struggle to scale the network or create a heavy barrier for user experience, users may naturally gravitate towards alternative chains in response. Yeah exactly now in the comments this is my question for today's video what do you guys think do you think ethereum is going to be able to solve these issues and come out on top still be the number one in this sector or do you think they are going to lose a massive ground to these other blockchains that are pretty much already there let me know what you guys think in the comments bonus points if you also give a couple of reasons as to why our fear and greed index for today, we have dropped down about six points. We're now in greed at 72, which is what we were at a few days ago. Yesterday, we were in extreme greed at 78, but now we we're just in greed. Let's check out the crypto prices for today. We will hit the top 10 quickly. So it looks like we have Bitcoin at 48.8 thousand, Ethereum at 3,200, Cardano, Cardano 11 cents away from $3, sitting at $2.89. Uh, Binance coin at $482, XRP at $1.16, Dogecoin at $0.28, cents, Solana at $93, still up 26% on the week, Polkadot up, at, not up, but at $25, and Uniswap at $26. And with that said, guys, we are going to wrap up the video here. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified every single time that I put out a video like this. Also, tap the like button as it does help a ton to grow the channel and push this video in the YouTube algorithm. And with that said, guys, actually, one more thing to add in here. You guys already know this is not financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor so don't take these videos as such i'm just having a great time with you guys documenting the crypto news and documenting this crypto bull run and that's really it anything that i share here is just my opinions i do deeply appreciate all of you that watch and support the channel but make sure that you also do your own research because at the end of the day we are all responsible for our own investment decisions with that said guys thank you so much for the support and i will see you on the next one